Uh, we've been all over Twitter uh, and the scandals, the files pouring out, the targeting of conservatives, the, the targeting we of Donald knew that Trump. Were actually happening. Uh, the rigging of an election is what conservatives are calling it as they wake up this morning on more document dumps over the weekend. Uh, and in fact, there's more coming out that you may not know about. Uh, and our friend Chris Ruby was all over this, uh, something in fact that Elon Musk himself noticed because she's uncovered even more dirt about what uh, the lefties at Twitter were doing before Musk took over. And Chris Ruby joins us from New York this morning. Chris, first of all, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Great to have you. We want to get into all this, you know, Dr. Fauci now being targeted uh, by Elon Musk saying he should be prosecuted. Uh, a lot of uh, the, uh, you know, they claimed to be following the science during the pandemic and they weren't and they were using Twitter, Facebook and other social media uh, for disinformation, basically, and they're being called out. But you uncovered something in the last few days, and I want to highlight it, uh, about uh, how officials had clear access uh, to your private messages, the direct messages, and how artificial intelligence is being used uh, to censor people, to censor information. And Elon Musk noticed your reporting and said it's worth a read, as you saw right there. Breaking, you wrote, former Twitter employee shares exclusive details with me on artificial intelligence access to direct messages and more. She's got a full thread if you follow her at Sparkling Ruby. But why don't you break it down for us? Let's start with artificial intelligence. What did you learn about that? So what I learned is that the the picture here in terms of censorship or the war on free speech on Twitter is a lot more complicated than people think. So a lot of the reporting to date that's been done with the Twitter files has focused only at the trust and safety level. But in order to actually do uh, any sort of censorship at scale, there are many other layers, divisions, and teams involved. So I really wanted to go to the source and understand what was going on at the code level, which is where my reporting started with a former Twitter employee who shared with me more about the underlying layers and how things worked in terms of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So what that means when there's machine learning is that there are many different words that you can detect for. And that former Twitter employee told me that they ran constant algorithms and scored tweets anywhere from a one to a 300. It was all based on probabilities and algorithms. And it wasn't just that you use certain words. The words had to be in a larger context of other things that you had said uh, on your account. And so once, those, once it reached over that threshold of 290, then they reviewed it. And it was either reviewed by uh, AI, artificial intelligence, or an mm -hmm. actual human moderator. One of the other so, things that I... Sorry? Yeah, real quick. So what does that mean for conservatives then? So if I read you right, you're saying that they were using this artificial intelligence. Like if Chris Ruby put out a tweet, Karen Turk put yeah. out a tweet with certain buzzwords that I would assume would be used by conservatives, not liberals. They Correct. would use that artificial intelligence to flag it and make it more likely that Karen would right. be censored than some crazy lefty who got away with what they're saying. Is that what you're telling us? Correct. And there's also, so I, I actually have exclusive access to the data, which I have not re not yet released, but I will say here in your show for the first time that I haven't shared anywhere yet. Uh, some of those words include election, fraud, uh, mm. ballot, stuffing, uh, GOP, uh, Biden, uh, anything, Trump 2024, right? So there's a lot of important phrases that are in there that the public wow. just has no idea. So anything that we, that you may have thought or were called a conspiracy theorist about, in fact, based on the data I'm seeing, I mean, this is what was being flagged as quote, political misinformation. Wow. It's, I, I mean, how much credit do we give to Elon Musk here? I have to ask because, you know, he really right now seems to be so responsible for finally like pulling the lid off of this thing. Is he responsible or would this have come out anyway? Well, I'll tell you this. The more he tweets, the angrier former employees seem to get and the, and the more data I'm receiving. So I'm not sure. He's certainly responsible for more data coming my way every time he really seems to make people mad. Um, I'm not sure that he even knows the depths of what was going on in terms of at the data science level, uh, because it seems like a lot of this information was siloed. And so some of this information with data science wasn't necessarily being shared with other departments. Uh, I will say what's fascinating when I asked, where, were, where did you take orders from to put these words uh, into the parameter list to detect? 
they said, from trust and safety and from government organiz- organizations and agencies. That's highly wow. concerning. Mm. Wow. So that's really, you're talking about propaganda machine. I mean, they're taking their direction from the government? The government through censor? robots, by the way. There's another angle to this you're alluding to, and I want you to know we have a live chat on Getter with almost 10,000 people in there already, and they're reacting to what you're saying in real time. And we've got these friends, Ralph and Chuck, who come on every Thursday uh, who are real American voices, and they're saying we are judged by robots. That's something that infuriates yeah. people as well. It's not just that Twitter... Uh, as a left-wing organization, was flagging these tweets um, and censoring conservatives and, oh, by the way, lying under oath on Capitol Hill about that censorship. But on top of that, Chris, what you're telling us really is they were using robots to judge conservatives, uh, which is also kind of chilling. It's very chilling. I would call it algorithmic bias. And so this is why I tweeted yesterday, if you don't have political diversity in your data science team and the engineers that code what you're putting in, what garbage in, garbage out, right? So if you say something is political misinformation, anything that detects for that will be deemed political misinformation. I also think it's important to understand that the people that were responsible for doing this, I'm not sure they believe they did anything wrong and they're proud of the work that they did. So they all aligned around this mission and believe that that was the right call. Wow. Uh, You also dug in on direct messages. So these are supposed to be private messages. In the case of Facebook, they have something called Messenger, where you can privately Mm -hmm. message somebody who's a friend or whatever on on, uh, that social media. And we've learned in recent months about how Facebook shared those private messages, whether it's with law enforcement and others. We're putting on the screen some back and forth you had with this whistleblower about Twitter DMs, as they're called, direct messages. What have you learned about that that the public should know? The public needs to understand anything that's not encrypted, someone can see. And we know this when it comes to law enforcement requests, whether that's a search warrant or a subpoena, right? They're going to need access to that information if there is any sort of ongoing investigation or a preservation request. So a lot of that actually was in the terms of service. But I think the reason why this came up is because in Barry Weiss's reporting, you were able to see the back end of the screen where it literally said uh, direct messages. And then on the top of that, I believe it said training or testing. Which, which alluded to artificial intelligence again, uh, because those, those tweets, they need access to specific tweets that are being flagged so that those tweets can then be used to train their models for auto-detect. Uh, so just assume anything that you are sending on Twitter right now is not encrypted. Most likely people can read it, even though there are quote-unquote strict protocols uh, within the organization. Even Elon Musk has said that th- those messages aren't encrypted. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know that a lot of people really trusted the security of Twitter to begin with, but it's an interesting point to realize that all of our data is so vulnerable and everything that you put out there can be read. Yeah, people in our live chat saying nothing is private, which we've known before, nothing. but it's being underlined again. Let's take a step back, uh, because with your company, the Ruby Media Group, you look at social media closely. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, Donald Trump has made this case. We played a clip in the last hour where while he was president in real time, he was calling out some of the Twitter officials and the media was interrupting the president yeah. saying, you're wrong. That's not true. And he was saying they're censoring conservatives. And here we are now, two years or so later. Trump was right. And as we say on our show, Trump was right. He was right about Twitter censoring him targeting him. And we learn with these files that Michelle Obama and other big figures on the left privately were press They were pressuring Twitter. Get Trump out of here. Uh, we've got a minute left. What, what's your summation of what you've learned and what you see spilling out in these Twitter files uh, about what they did to target Trump and conservatives? Well, in, in summary, I would say that I have definitive data and proof that I'm sitting on uh, thousands of uh, files and words and parameters that definitively had Trump's name in it, including Trump 2024, anything regarding the election, uh, and again, ballot stuffing or election fraud or MAGA or stop the steal or any of those related search terms, right? The answer is always going to be in the data. Data doesn't lie. And so if you really want to report on this, you need to get to the source of the data. And moving forward, it's clear if you want to win this digital war, America needs to accelerate in artificial intelligence. That's clear. We need more people and political diversity, both sides going into data science. That's the only chance we have of fighting this. 
Oh, so we gotta we have to get robots on our side to fight the robots. That robots they have, to fight the robots. Saying, robots uh, it's to fight interesting. The robots. I don't know. I, it all sounds so crazy, but that's the reality. Uh, and look, a lot of companies are into artificial intelligence because it means they're going to knock out workers. They're going to save money. Right. And I got people in our live chat and getter saying. AI is going to be part of the demise of America. So you can see people fired up about this. Chris Ruby, we appreciate you digging in. We appreciate you coming in and telling us some of that information for the first time. We hope to have you back soon. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. All right. We appreciate Thanks. that. Some great stuff. Yeah, really interesting. Quick break. Uh, we're back with some Getter and some Truth Social, uh, Real American Voices, and also a Sunny Side Up.